One day in January, when I was living in Louisiana, a king cake showed up at work, and I was like, okay, it's a little early for Mardi Gras, but thanks for the free food. And then two days later, another king cake showed up. King cake has the thing where if you get the slice with the little baby figurine in it, you have to buy the next cake. So we just had cake for two months, which is outrageous. I don't understand why that tradition hasn't spread. Why is it all about beads? You should be eating more cake. I should be eating more cake. Mardi Gras should be about cake. Hey everybody, I'm Virginia Shooty. Welcome to my master bathroom. My kids are asleep and I'm a real person, so here we all are. Back in 2013, a group called HealthyStuff.org and some partners released some research. They tested the chemical composition of Mardi Gras necklaces, bracelets, and toys, and more than 60% of the stuff they tested had lead concentrations higher than the limit set by the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission and way above the limit set by the American Academy of Pediatrics. The products they tested also had other unpleasant chemicals in them like flame retardants, but I want to focus on lead right now because we know more about how lead affects human health. Lead causes problems when it is breathed in, swallowed, or absorbed through the skin. This means that little kids who put beads in their mouth or anyone who comes in contact with Mardi Gras products with their bare skin could be coming in contact with particles that will then get into their body. I want to stress two things here. First, there is no need to panic. There's no way to know if the beads or other Mardi Gras stuff in your life have higher than recommended levels of lead or other chemicals without testing the stuff that you come in contact with. If you are concerned about lead exposure, now or in the past, talk to your doctor because you have options. The second thing that I really want you to take away from this video is that this is a completely preventable potential health risk that you can immediately do something about. A lot of the environmental and health problems in the world today may seem like they're humongous and we need sweeping changes to national laws to make some kind of change, but this is something where unless you live on a major parade route or you work in a factory manufacturing Mardi Gras stuff, then you get to control your exposure and you get to decide if this is a risk that you want to take. Kids are affected more by exposure to lead than adults are, which is why lead levels in kids' products are regulated. But if lead levels in kids' products are regulated, then how is this happening? Beads are generally manufactured and sold in bunches, and the packages for those bunches will often say something like, not suitable for kids. And just like that, the manufacturers do not have to meet lead requirements for kids' toys. If you decide not to risk it, then get rid of your Mardi Gras beads. I'm talking about the ones that are really shiny, metallic looking, and then the paint rubs off over time, and there's that dark gray bead underneath. The beads are also kind of worked into the string. It's not a loop that the string goes through. If you have wooden beads or recycled paper beads, those are totally fine. I don't have any to show you as an example because we got rid of ours when we realized the problems that they could potentially cause. A lot of the Make Mardi Gras Green projects focus on reducing plastic waste by recycling plastic Mardi Gras beads, which is a great goal. But if you're concerned mostly by human health, then that means that lead beads are still just being passed around. So you wanna focus on the reducing step, reducing consumption in the first place. If you still want to celebrate Mardi Gras with beads, then visit the link in the description for some great non-harmful bead manufacturers. And support science research. There's a scientist at LSU that recently accidentally figured out how to make an algae-based biodegradable bead. They will need time and funding before their beads can impact the market, but I think a lot of people are really excited to see what they can do. One more thing while I have your attention. We should know more about this. I tried to find a comprehensive report on the state of Mardi Gras chemical composition since that 2013 report was released almost seven years ago now. And shrug emoji. There are a few people that have done things on their own since then, but other than that, people just keep talking about the 2013 data. So is there any way to know if the beads and other Mardi Gras stuff in your life is actually toxic? No, not unless we test them. But is this a preventable potential health risk that you can take action on right now if you want to? Absolutely. So think about the beads in your life, talk to your friends about all this, and eat more cake. Bye. You can come in. Thanks for letting me use our bathroom. <laughs> it's going well. It's good. Yep. Yeah. I'm blushing now. <laughs>
Why? Because <laughs> you heard me yelling. Mardi Gras should be about cake. I agree. It should be about cake. 